Welcome listeners, I'm Ria, your host and today we're going to embark on this journey of School Talk podcast with the brilliant minds of the future. Today we have Ria, an amazing, ambitious student with us. Hi Ria. Hi. She is an 8th grade student and she aspires and dreams of becoming a doctor. Apart from her academic pursuits, she loves and enjoys dancing and also has a very keen interest in leadership. So you have a very keen interest in leadership. So where is that stemming from? I also understand that you are currently holding a leadership role in your school. How is that fulfilling to you? To answer your first question, where is that stemming from? I feel it's majorly from my parents. It's uh, because I've seen them all my life taking up leadership roles and being in that kind of position. And, and I feel that really inspires me to be that kind of person, to keep be that kind of role model for other people to set an example and um, where I'm going forward with this uh, where I am right now I really feel something that's really important is taking up uh, leadership classes for other people because in schools the next generation is the one that's going to be anchoring the ship and they need really that kind of exposure that allows them to know how it feels like to be in a re leadership positions to be a leader and what qualities are important for a leader and that kind of exposure and training should be given to them beforehand. That's really interesting to hear. And while we were chatting up before this, uh, you happened to tell me that you recently were part of an international conference. Could you just tell me how did that impact you as a student leader? In the international conferences, we were all uh, talking about many different issues going on globally. So about climate change, about violence against women and all the injustice that's going on. So that I think that really inspires me because that really showed me how many issues there are going on and we as students can do so much more to combat uh, things. For example, for climate change, maybe a simple beach cleanup or a park cleanup or just raising awareness within the community about uh, violence against women can be such a huge impact for the society. That's such an amazing exposure for a student to have. And um, I also understand while we were chatting up that you have been part of two different educational systems in our, you know, in our, in our country. And how has that impacted you? Like you could say in a way that before I was, you know, experiencing this and I thought this about it. And now I'm experiencing this and, you know, I think this about it. Like how are the, those two different? What's your perspective on that? Previously, it was all about just whatever you got, the knowledge that you got, that was it, that was in the barriers and you couldn't know anything, you know, more than that. But here I feel it's an open space. It's an open area. You're always open to thoughts. Uh, you can always share your opinion and there's nothing constrict constricted here. You're not being stopped. And I feel that's really great because you don't have to think twice before saying anything. And I just love that kind of freedom that I got in this new arena. That's really nice. When we talk about schools and the education system, of course, the teachers, how did you see the teachers' ideologies being different and how did that impact your educational experience in both the places? Yeah, so previously, like I was saying, what the teacher said, it was final. You, you didn't have any ifs or buts or any extra statements to it. Once the teacher said it, that was it. But here I feel that, you know, the teachers themselves, they ask for opinions. They, they uh, acknowledge that if they are wrong, they must be corrected. Otherwise, you know, in, even in Indian systems, many people believe that uh, anything said by the elders is always, always right and it cannot be wrong. But here people are more, like I said, they acknowledge their mistakes. They want to know, they want to learn from the younger people. And it's a two-way learning. It's not just a one-way learning. That is true. It should always be a two-way learning. And so now that you're going through these uh, different experiences and it's how is all of this shaping you, your personality? I definitely feel it has made me a person who is much more open-minded and ready to share their opinions because uh, previously I was always, you know, this person who used to sit on the side, just, you know, know what was there in her mind, but not knowing how to express those but I feel I've become much more expressive now I know what to say I know that I have an op opinion on this and it has to be heard and 
I'm very strong about my thoughts and I feel that's really shaped me as a person. So are you saying that you did not get uh, ample opportunities to express yourself uh, you know before you you know joined this new uh, educational system that that's you are right. in that's currently? Right. That's right. And how did that make you feel? So that made me feel suppressed kind of because it was like I felt like I was in this huge crowd where everyone knew what they had to say and I was this one person there amongst this crowd not knowing what to say not knowing how to express my thoughts and just I just felt suppressed in that you felt suppressed yeah that's really sad but then uh just if you think about it I'm sure you would have a lot of friends from you know back there uh, where you were before how have your friend circle evolved and uh, what do you think uh, like your previous set of friends were or are they still your set of friends? Are, are you still friends with them? And how has that evolved your friend circle basically? Basically what happened was I'm, I'm still friends with uh, my previous school friends. Uh, but something I feel that has evolved a lot is that the people that I met with in my new school were much more open-minded. And like I said, we had similar thoughts and I really felt I could connect with them on major issues because I never remember talking to my previous school friends about uh, global issues or major topics like climate change or economics or anything related to that. But I feel that now we have a kind of a platform where all these things can be said and they can be openly discussed within people of the similar age. And I felt that that was really great to know people who were like me and who understood me and my views and topics like these. That's nice. So previously, right now, you just mentioned that your keen interest in leadership stems from your parents. What is the impact that a parent has on, you know, how they bring a child in today's day and world? And according to you, from your perspective, how should that be? And how was it, you know, to if you had to address to your uh, friends' parents, what should they be doing uh, that, you know, if they had to cover up the gap of how could they be better to level up the game of the missing gaps that we are, you know, kind of addressing here? What I think is every child learns from their parent and that's what I've done all my life because I see my parents um, holding conferences and talking to so many people in a crowd and, you know, really stepping up that game and that really inspires me because I look at them and I uh, I think to myself that I can be like them I can take that inspiration and I really feel that's what parents have to be I mean I'm, I'm no person to give advice to a no, parent the parents are the uh, you know every yeah. kid's first teacher exactly. so yeah definitely a lot exactly. stems from there yeah and if parents could just be that role model I'm pretty sure they are but if they could just be that role model that person who those kids could learn from who those kids could be inspired from I think that is what a child would need the most so do you think uh, you're the friends who what are the kind of what is the nature of the conversations that you've had with your uh, friends from your uh, previous uh, place would they not talk highly about their parents like what 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 is it that you feel that they the parents did not hold a role model title to them or did no, they? It's it's not about uh, two sets of parents holding different types of a role model category. But I think for a child, even both the schools, all of them, for them, their parents were role models. But it is just to that kind of level. Hmm. Because right now, the level of understanding that was there, they thought of role model as a much bigger spectrum of things. But previously, my friends used to think of parents as their role model only as a certain set of things. So I feel a spectrum here is much more bigger. But obviously, in both the cases, their parents were role models for them. And they were people that my friends looked up to. Are you uh, kind of saying that a, a well-read parent would definitely be a, a role model to a student, to a child? Yeah, that's, okay. that's what I'm saying. You have two older brothers. They did not go through the educational system that you are going through right now. And uh, you mentioned earlier that, you know, it's different and you felt suppressed over there and now you feel liberated. So what do you think from your perspective 
did your siblings miss out on anything at all you know it because i feel what has shaped all of us all three of us as a person is definitely our parents because like i said previously what they have done to for us for our upbringing is what has made us and i don't feel even though we've gone through different curriculum that has changed us at all because it's in the end of the day it's who we are and that is completely shaped by our parents because the only difference we had was in education systems and curriculums but who we are as a person that was completely defined by our parents so you uh, as a family with, with along with your siblings had rich experiences along with your parents and that shaped them so you did not feel that they missed out on anything because they were in a different educational system before yeah right all right so uh, if you had to reflect upon uh, the education system that you were in before and as compared to you are in right now uh, could you like number a few things what a student who is listening to you right now how could they kind of level up their game and if they do not have like let's be honest we do not have all well read parents out there and uh, every child out there looks up to their parent but uh, you know they all have their shortcomings in such way so if you had to kind of you know number down this 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 what are the things that a student who's listening to you could actually do to kind of be a little more fluent and do not feel that they are missing out on something and kind of fill the gap in their educational system right now is there something that comes to your uh, mind firstly i feel the most important thing is never stopping because i feel curiosity has no ends i still remember in the pandemic when our schools were on online i always kept feeling that i was missing out on something i was missing out on knowledge and i always wanted more and that's when i started downloading multiple apps and going on websites and starting learning on my own because that's i i felt that hunger for knowledge and i feel if you really want to up your game don't just stop there go beyond because that's what you really need to be on top of this fast pacing world that we're in right now because what you're given the number of resources that you're given could never be enough that no matter where you are no matter what stage in life you are they will never be enough you will always have to go beyond who you are and your resources to get what you require to be a better person and to achieve much more and secondly i would definitely feel that what a student could do to up their game is also like i said previously take classes on their own because that would be really important because many schools they don't offer much extracurricular opportunities for children so if they could learn things on their own because now we're in an age where everything is digital and you could learn so many things digitally be it music or dance or learning an instrument or anything if they could pick up any of these skills it would be very helpful to them absolutely so yeah so beyond go beyond have be curious in nature and go beyond and what what you mentioned also what would your you know two piece about the teachers who are listening to you right now and uh, if they were from the previous uh, educational system that they are in what is the message that you would want to give them so that they can do a little more for their students who are with yeah. is which is not generally supported by the curriculum over there what would your message I would be definitely that? feel that don't undermine the student because i've seen multiple times i mean i've been in this curriculum for almost 7 years 7 to 8 years and i've seen teachers undermining a student so many times for tiny mistakes that i've done i think students require much more support from the teachers and i'm not saying teachers don't give that there are so many teachers i've seen so many teachers really spending their extra time with those students and that's something they really need and uh, also i feel like i said earlier it has to be a two way learning thing not just a one way learning experience because when a teacher wants to learn from a student the student also feels engaged and uh, they also feel that oh yeah i have something to share and the teacher is ready to listen to me and that is something that really sparks their interest in a subject or the complete learning experience that's really nice to hear so uh, tell me something the 
the current uh, educational system that you are in right now do you think this is wholesome and this is it and you know it couldn't get better or do you think even this has uh, certain gaps and you know places of improvement what's your perspective on that nothing can be perfect even the system that i am in right now i'm definitely feeling that it does need improvements for example um experiential learning hmm. that is a very big part of the system that i am right now but i feel it should not be overwhelmed so much that is the only thing that happening and a child does not focus on normal learning and only feels that activities are the only way like it should be there but it should not be overpowered so there are many uh i don't want to say faults but there are many gaps in the system in every system possible and they have to be rectified so there's always room for improvement and yes. but you are really pleased with the way uh you are proceeding right now academically and as you said you have a keen interest in and dream of being a doctor yeah. one day which is really amazing i wish you all the luck for that and thank you so much for having this quick short chat with us and thank you for being part of school talks thanks ria thank you Thank <laughs> you.